So, okay. Mm, so, nope. <laughs> the way I understood this Sunday fun day, as right. it is sometimes called by other people, not me, because I'm an adult. I uh, <laughs> was thinking Pitch Perfect 2, bowling. Um, Sunday rolls around. I'm like, yeah, pick me up. I'll go, because I'm always down to hang out with, like, my buddies. Turns out, we get to the movie theater, and we're here to see The Visit. Okay. I didn't know anything about The Visit. Okay. I heard that it was a horror movie. I'm sitting here thinking, right. maybe this movie's going to star a, um, a, a CW cast-off. Uh-huh. You know, as they tend to do. Uh-huh. Well, it'll be fun. There'll be shrieking. There'll be jump scares. Uh-huh. Let's go. Credits start rolling. Yes, they do. <laughs> Produced, written, Yes, it was. Uh-huh. M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. I did not know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did not know what I was... <laughs> I never, I mean, I've heard of the legend of M. Night Shyamalan movies, and I've never felt the need to experience for myself. Right. Why would you? So, here I am. Paid $10. Honestly, my friend went out of his way to come get me to go see this M. Night Shyamalan movie. Yes, he did. Because he forgot to come pick me up, so he went to the movie <laughs> theater and he was like, Fuck, Liana! <laughs> I was like, oh. Uh, so I'm there, I pay $10, and this whole movie... Like, God, where to, <laughs> where to begin? So the, the framing device, the, the storytelling device of this movie is that a 15-year-old is shooting a documentary while she goes to visit her grandparents, who she's never seen before because her mother and her grandparents are all estranged. I don't know. So she's shooting a documentary. So M. Night Shyamalan, in his wisdom and his, his creativity and his power as a storyteller, decides to actually shoot this fucking movie like a 15-year-old is is manning the camera uh-huh, so uh-huh. there's like four heads that are cut off like nothing is artistic yep. about it there's like maybe five artistic shots but like nothing really it's you don't actually Film major. if you oh, if that's your if that's your framing device you don't actually have to do it like an actual 15 year old <laughs> what is, and it's just the pacing is just strange and awkward and there's like dirty diapers happening like i can't even of course so my i had Three favorite moments. I'm trying to remember what they were. I know one of them was when they were Skyping with their mother and their heads were very, very artistically placed to not cover up the Skype logo for like five minutes. Thanks for your endorsement, Skype, of this great movie. Yep. Uh, I always I love a good product placement. That's supposed to be like clever, but it's not. Nope. Uh, there was a point where the 15 year old daughter was talking to her 11 year old brother or 13 or whatever I don't even fucking know she she's like I don't know I don't understand what's going on in the shed I think grandpa is throwing shade I don't get it <laughs> and I'm like did you that's just what use, you do in the shed did you just use the phrase throwing shade to mean mysterious because you did because in context like grandpa was not throwing shade grandpa was being mysterious and being shady that's not what throwing shade means, M. Night Shyamalan. Wait, You're a mess. Me. There was also, at one point... Forgot her surfboard. This is my third favorite part in the movie. Okay. The daughter... I'm ready. ...describes the son's skin as ratchet. Describing the skin. Sun, the son's skin. The son's skin. As ratchet. Your skin is starting to look a little ratchet. That's how kids talk. That's not. That's not how kids that's talk. That's how I they, understand that the children talk. That's, that's that not, is the modern parlance that, of the youth that's of not, modern. That's not how ratchet is used. That's not what ratchet means. But ultimately, it was super fun watching an M Night Shyamalan film. I had a great time, and we're still talking about it and dissecting all the ways that it was strange and awful and the worst. After that, we decided we needed to go to Olive Garden. So As we one all. Does. <laughs> We all work at a and restaurant. And that's how i garden, you know. It was like, let's follow up this disappointment with disappointment. Was basically the theme of the night. <laughs> um, so we go there, and, and we're all like... Oh, God, I wish there was a less shitty word for this, but we're foodies. We're foodies. Foodies. We like, we like good food, and we work in the restaurant business, and we go out to eat, and we're, we are um, pumped about food and drinks. So... We're sitting at the Olive Garden and we're going over the menu and we're just basically doing this to be assholes. It's like, uh-huh. like a filmmaker attending 
of film school. No, there's a better metaphor here. I'm, hold on. Give it. It's like, it's like a sportsman. Okay. A professional <laughs> sportsman um, joining your dad's uh, softball league. You know? Like, yeah. It's like, that's why we went to the Olive Garden. So it was me, um, the sous chef, front of house manager, the other front of house manager, um, so and her fiance, and then I don't really know what Jesse is, but he's like the second sous chef, like sous sous chef. Yep. I'm not sure what his position is called. Um, no, sous sous chef sounds sous-sous right. Sous sous chef. That sounds professional. Sous sous. We're all there. Three of us are vegan. Now, Olive Garden has very helpfully put online a menu that delineates what is gluten free. And right. what is vegan? Yes. The vegan options are as follows. Okay. Most of the noodles, which pasta is supposed to have egg in it. Like, if you're a big Italian restaurant for real, like, your pasta is going to be homemade, have egg in it, not be from the box. Right, right. But none of the pastas have egg in them. Right. And also... <clears throat> that's good. Kids tomato sauce. Okay. That is... Right. That's the only sauce. That's okay. the only sauce that's vegan. Kids tomato sauce delicious Mm -hmm. also the blackberry dipping sauce for one of the fried desserts was vegan (laughs) pasta and blackberry that's that's great so we're all uh, andy and melanie concoct something they're like can we get this and then have more vegetables in it and kids tomato sauce please. <laughs> and the server was like okay weirdos and I go there's like a make your own pasta menu okay then you're supposed to choose like a cheese and a noodle and a sauce yep, yep, and yep. a meat and it's $12 and I'm like can you just hook me up with some penny and some kids tomato sauce yes. and she's like sure so my plate <laughs> comes out and it's just Noodles that are undercooked. Like, these are not al dente. These are undercooked. And right. just a scoop of tomato sauce on top. <laughs> it looks like something you would make for yourself if you're a single mother and you have two children and you're coming down with a cold. Like, it's not... <laughs> <laughs> like, real talk, I looked at that plate and it's like, <laughs> that's been a night for Bob. Right? Oh, yeah, I put it up on Instagram. Yeah. Because uh, it was so beautiful. Um... You know, I had chicken in my sauce and thing, but, you know, that's that's about in line. Yep. I yep. used a fancier sauce. <laughs> you didn't use kids' tomato sauce? I did not. It just had basil and garlic, though. That's all that differentiated Nothing it. Nothing in the kids' tomato sauce. It was literally, it was like kind of ketchup. With, like, it was textured ketchup. That's all it was. Okay. Anyway, so Can't that was my Olive him. Garden adventure. Um, <laughs> at one point... Uh, Jesse picked up the fork. He was like, okay, I know what a fork is, but what is this? It's got three prongs on it instead of four. <laughs> well, that's a trident. No, well, that, that's what for everyone else said. And I was like, no, no, that's a dinglehopper. <laughs> 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 and we looked it up, and sure as hell, the dinglehopper is only three pr- prongs. Okay. So if you ever get a fork and it's only three prongs, that is not a trident. That is, in fact, a dinglehopper. A dingle that was my story of what I did two weeks ago. I probably had other stories and things that I've done. I worked on some short stories. Finished my spec- script. That was cool. Solid choices. Oh, yeah. On Twitter, you wrote that you made a 10,000-page short story. <laughs> <laughs> I caught that. I was like, whatever. They get it. They know. I hate 10, to read your novels. 10,000 <laughs> 10, words. 10,000 words. I mean, it could be 10,000 pages if I made the font real big. <laughs> a letter per page. <laughs> a word. A word per page. page. That's a better it. ratio. I went to a wedding. Huh? Huh? That's Good. That's where I got Good. this owl, uh, owl. And it was... I was so happy and so excited to go to this wedding because... It was one of my online friends, and I use online friends very loosely at this point, and I met her in high school just doing, like, online singing is what I did, and we quickly learned that we lived, you know, 30 minutes away from each other. Right. And so we hung out in real life a couple of times, and she's moved away, and I've always admired her, and I feel like we have a connection, and she got engaged a few months back, and then, um... Eventually, she invited me to her wedding, and I was really, really touched by that. Um, But I didn't really know who to bring, because I knew it was going to be a very nerdy wedding. She 
walk down the aisle to the Sailor Star song. <laughs> and I Good. have so much respect for that. Like, yeah, yes, fun. of course, this is your fucking special day. And that is a beautiful song. Um, and then there was, like, a, a song sung that was composed by Yoko Kano. And when the ring bearers came out, they were they were barefoot and they were dressed like little hobbits. They were dressed like little hobbits. So I had to find somebody to go to this wedding that was going to understand what was happening. Um, and I asked my friend Chris to go. Hi, Chris. Hey. And he went. And what I didn't really think about going to this wedding in Stillwater was that I have blue hair. <laughs> And my friend Chris is a he's 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 a black man, so we don't match anyone else at this wedding. Can't imagine do. And you want to know who who showed up late? Cause she's a real slow driver and didn't give herself enough time. I did. Liana. Yeah. So we're walking up, and we're late. Chris is black, guy with blue hair. We're from the city. Yep. And I get stopped on my way, and Jenna's mom is like, the bride is coming out now. And so we just kind of, like, stood at the back and, like, watched her walk down the aisle. And then very awkwardly took our seats. Thankfully, there are a lot more people that were much more late. Right, yeah. So I felt yeah. a little bit warmed. But, um, sure did stick out. <laughs> sure did stick out. There she is, blue hair. And a black and there was no there were no other black people. <laughs> <laughs> I forget that that happens outside of Minneapolis. I live in yeah. a I live in a diverse bubble. And then I get out of it and I'm confused and scared. You know, yeah, I still world. remember the one time I went to a wedding and I had to walk there, so like I brought along an umbrella. And then there was nowhere to put my umbrella in the church. So I just had to carry him around my umbrella all day. And then at the reception, couldn't find a coat rack by the time I got there. So I had to carry around my umbrella there. Solid. <laughs> Solid. Just had my umbrella all day. <laughs> Brought it to the movie theater. I love it. Because some people, like, saw <laughs> Spider-Man. <They're laughs> hey, our friend got married. Let's go see Spider-Man. Basically. Uh-huh. Like, after the reception, like, they were like, hey, there's going to be a bonfire in a couple hours after we, like, you know, mm-hmm. get out of our wedding stuff. <laughs> I can't remember if they got out of the wedding stuff because, like, we kind of got there late because Spider-Man was a much longer movie than we anticipated. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to weddings is weird. I'm going to have to start going on very soon. Um, I wasn't going... I don't have a lot of friends who are married. Right. Because it wasn't... Because it's against the law. It wasn't legal for most of them. (laughs) (laughs) Like... Also, they're kind of hot messes, but like everyone's kind of settling down, and I'm I gotta get ready. I gotta get ready to go to more weddings and find more plus ones and be prepared to be like the bride or the groom's only friend. Not only friend, but like they're my only friend, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, well, I don't know anybody else here, and just talking to my plus one. Though my table ended up being pretty cool at Jenna's wedding. Huh? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we we had some good times. Yeah. 